I was sinking deep in sin, far from the peaceful shore, very deeply stained with sin, sinking to rise no more. But the master of the sea heard my despairing cry, from the waters lifted me, now safe am I. Love lifted me, love lifted me, when nothing else could help. Love lifted me, love lifted me, love lifted me, when nothing else could help. Love lifted me. Calling on Jesus has great benefits. We are in the age of Pentecost, for whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. I've called on Jesus many times in my life to save me, and he has never failed to give his helping hand. Today I'm going to tell you that I was already raptured. I want you to understand that I'm not bragging or at the least not on me, or that I have some kind of special relationship with God. I am no more special than any other Christian. We are beloved in Christ, and He is the captain of our helm. Hebrews chapter 2, verses 9 through 10. But we see Jesus, who was made a little lower than the angels for the suffering of death crowned with glory and honor, that he by the grace of God should taste death for every man. For it became him for whom are all things, and by whom are all things, in bringing many sons unto glory, to make the captain of their salvation perfect through sufferings. I'll only tell you my experience so that you might know or understand what it would be like to be raptured, at least by comparing it to my experience. When I was a young lad of 14 or 15 years of age, I had a near-death experience. I was carried out to the deep waters by a riptide. I became exhausted and I sank to the part of the inlet of the ocean that people used as a place to swim. I sank no more than about 50 to 70 feet. As a child, a literal child that believed in God, I prayed to him to save me because I could not save myself. It was a short prayer beneath the waves at the bottom that I saw lights from a distance under which I tried to reach clarity. And as I was trying to see, that's when the rapture happened. At a moment, I was made to go upward. I was literally caught up to the surface. Caught up and caught off guard because I didn't expect it. It was like gravity lost its grip and I became buoyant like a balloon in water. The ascent to the surface was so fast that the water felt like I was in a jacuzzi of air bubbles. It was so quick and wonderful that I had no time to think but only experience. It was at the surface I was met by a lifeguard on a surfboard, just like those who will be raptured will be met by Jesus Christ in the air. This lifeguard had me wait for a while before approaching me. Did you know that panic swimmers can pull others down with them? They try to grab hold of something, and if you're nearby, they could also drown you. Now, at that time, I was way past the panic stage. I felt tired, but no longer required assistance in staying afloat. How that could be, I don't know. When I went under, the sky was dark and the waters were tumultuous. But when I came up, the sun was shining and everything was calm. That in itself seemed to me to be a miracle. The lifeguard, he took me to shore. But I knew that it was God that had saved me. And he provided a ride to the shore when I came to the surface. 
This was before I even knew there was a word called rapture. All I can say is that it's not quite unusual that the Spirit of God can do marvelous things. Philip was also raptured in Acts chapter 8 verse 39. It says, And when they were come up out of the water, the Spirit of the Lord caught away Philip, that the eunuch saw him no more, and he went on his way rejoicing. The Lord caught away Philip. In verse 40, But Philip was found at Azotus, and passing through he preached in all the cities till he came to Caesarea. It's interesting to note, while Peter was being caught up after the water, the water of baptism, I was caught up in the water. Philip was not raised from the dead, but he enjoyed the transportation or the vehicle of the Holy Spirit by which he traveled to Azotus. I also was not raised from the dead, but was raised from becoming dead. In this life we have tribulation. But do not fear. God is ready to give you a helping hand and to save you from all the bad times ahead. In this age of Pentecost, one prayer is enough for salvation. You do not need to keep on asking for salvation. God hears every one of our prayers and he is mighty to save. Zephaniah chapter 3 verse 17. The Lord thy God in the midst of thee is mighty. He will save. He will rejoice over thee with joy. He will rest in his love. He will joy over thee with singing. This is the age. This is the age that whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Are you ready to call? If you're not saved today, it's a miracle that God has you to listen to this message. He's telling you something. He's giving you an opportunity for salvation. And the prayer doesn't have to be elegant. You just have to realize a few things before you call. Like Christ, he died for your sins. According to the scripture, he was buried. And in three days, he arose from the dead. But you know... If you don't even have a tongue to call, you can point, and God knows the intent of your heart. Yes, it's simple. Salvation is simple. You call upon God to save you, like I was at the bottom of that ocean, and I called on Jesus to save me, and he did. He did. Before I had time to say another prayer, it happened. That's how quick God can answer prayer. Some of us, we don't get answers to prayer in things of life because God knows what's best for us. But salvation is always answered. The angels, the Bible said, rejoice over one sinner that repents. And repentance just means to have a change of mind. To turn from going one way and going another. Instead of joining hands with Satan, you join hands with Christ. Instead of being on your way to hell, you're on your way to heaven. It's upward. Hallelujah. Heaven is up. Hell is down. Jesus, save me. Wash me in your blood. Take me to heaven. If I die or if I should be raptured up into the clouds to meet you in the air. Alive. But saved. I just thank you, Lord, that we can trust in you. Whosoever believeth on Christ shall be saved. That is the will of the Father to hear Christ. And Jesus, everybody knows the verse, John 3, 16, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have what? Everlasting life. That's what we want. Glory. God who made the earth, the sun, the beauty of it all. We want it to continue forever and ever. And it will. Make that call today. And we thank you, Jesus. Thank you for your salvation. Thank you for dying on the cross for my sins. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Thank you. Praise you. This is Larry Zorro. Don't miss any of my videos. I was thinking.
We want to grow up together in maturity in Christ. Hallelujah. I just praise you now, God, through Jesus' holy name. Hallelujah. Glory to God. See you later. Bye. From the waters lifted me, now safe am I. Love lifted me, love lifted me. When nothing else could help, love lifted me, love lifted me, love lifted me. When nothing else could help, love lifted me.